Hello everyone, Saturn here giving you another quick Vicky 3 tutorial. This time it's going to be about choosing a war target, how to do it properly in three easy steps. Let's get into it. Step one is choosing the right target. I wouldn't necessarily play this game painting the whole map your color because a lot of times trying to take over a land, you end up losing a lot more than you gain. For example, you lose population because people die and get wounded. You also spend a lot of money, which can hurt your GDP later on because you're just not using that money to build and increase your economy. So you really need to be careful who you choose and have good reasons why. There are a few things I would look at. The first is their culture. So that makes a huge difference. When you take over any country or any land or state, you're going to see that you do get some turmoil. But the speed at which this goes down and to make this actually go down to 0%, you're going to have to have an accepted culture. So what you want to do is make sure that you look underneath your laws the easiest way to get this done is to be multiculturalism that means you don't have to worry about anything you could take over anybody and their you know culture is going to be accepted culture exclusion you got to look a little bit closer as long as you share a cultural trait with any of the primary cultures in your country then you should be pretty good to go racial segregation is even harder and so these so honestly you want cultural exclusion or multiculturalism cultural exclusion will mean you'll probably have to stay within your region uh for people to you know be accepted i'm going to go to multiculturalism in this run as soon as i can as well so i can start taking over others but that's a one thing i would look at first when you're thinking about targets you're probably going to want to think of something close to home for my cambodia run i would see here that uh I would want to first look at their culture. So I'd click on here, look at their population and see that they are Southeast Asian heritage. I would look then back at us, make sure in Cambodia, we're also Southeast Asian heritage. So I know they'll be accepted. The next thing I'd want to do is look to see, is it even worth it in, in regards to peasants? Uh, do they have enough population to even do anything at zero? This would make me hesitate to take this over, right? Because there's no available people really to take this over unless we start to close down maybe a dye plantation. Then we can make some peasants available, but that'll also cost some radicals. So we have to make sure, is there actually resources here that are worth it? And there is one, right? So gold mines are like amazing. It's just pretty much printing money. So this land alone, I think would be worth it. It has, uh, I could go up to a level of three, which is really good. So uh, I think we would even probably kick people off of rice farms into the gold mines. Um, so this is worth taking. Uh, but again, if they didn't have gold mines and there was zero peasants and really nothing here under the resources to take over, I would say this would be a target I would skip. Still under step one, you want to also check your army versus theirs and navy. So you can see here they have a battalion of one. If we go back to us, we can see we have 56. We have 15 flotilla. To their zero so that's really good so our navy is definitely stronger and it looks like our military is you can hover over it as well and see the army power projection of six versus ours which is power projection of 552 so it's definitely really good if the numbers are close i would also recommend uh doing this i, I like to do this it's a little bit painful but finding uh one of their barracks so for ours you can see we have skirmish infantry and we have shrapnel artillery and we've also got you know recovery rates of the medical field hospitals are really good uh it's good to check their buildings as well because sometimes this could make quite a bit of a difference and find their barracks and you can see here they're a tier lower so they have line infantry and they have mobile artillery and actually they have no medical aid at all so we're in really good shape there so this target's still looking good Lastly, in step one, I like to try to figure out how will the battle go? Where will the battlefronts be? And in this example, it's uh, not good, right? So Cambodia is here and our targets here. We have no border uh, that are touching. So that means there will be no war front that starts or no battlefront. So we would have to do a naval invasion here. So we really got to keep that in mind. We know that they have no navy, so that's really good, right? Our target doesn't, and we have, you know, a powerful navy or at least 15 flotilla. However, as a diplomatic play goes through and uh, they, they, our target starts to get some other countries maybe on their side, we need to keep that in mind. And if those countries have a much better navy than we do and we can't get someone else on our side, this may be a no-go as well. So th that's the one thing I would say this is one risk going into this one. I would still say it's probably worth going for it. This target's still a go, but uh, definitely you want to keep that in mind. If there's a naval invasion that needs to happen, got to look at the Navy. Step two is now that we know what's going to happen, right? In step one, we know we definitely want it. We know the reasons why. We have an idea of where the battle would go if it was just Cambodia versus our target. 
However, we need to see in step two, who else will get involved, right? That's the biggest question. So there's actually a lens for this. If you go here into strategic regions, uh, you can see if you, sometimes you got to zoom in a little bit, but we can see that we're in Indonesia. So here is all the people who have some sort of strategic interest or they own a land within this uh, strategic region. So any of these countries can get involved. You can see this another way too. If you try to go here and try to hit like something that's aggressive, like the conquer state, it'll say who they believe will join the war. But if you don't have, let's say a negative relationship with them already, and you don't want to maybe start doing that, this is the safest way to be able to check all this. So the strategic region lens is actually really good to do and to go through. And so now we know like Russia could get involved, which could be a problem for France could get involved. So you may want to look at the, definitely the bigger countries and you can start to take a look and see, okay, are they at war? If they're not at war, then that's a problem. Um, so yeah, so th this starts to let you say, okay, yeah, I want this target in step one and step two though, is like, who's going to get involved in this and, and how risky is this going to be? Another step you could take to try to figure out who's going to get involved again. This is not an exact science. I uh, can't tell in the game yet necessarily when someone's going to join. I'm trying to figure that out myself. But what you can do is go to the diplomatic lens and you can then right click on your target and go to open diplomacy and you can see who they're, you know, having good relations with. So that's everyone in green and in red, which is us, uh, who they do not. And then what's more important is clicking here to their attitudes and you can see who hates the target. So for example, example or domineering so you see france definitely doesn't like this so france would maybe join our side right but you can see here with the shield the dutchies and these have a protective attitude so you think they would join their side in the war it doesn't mean it's going to happen but it gives you a kind of an idea of of what's going on here and you know even great britain has a domineering so they really want this land as well um so i so this gives you somewhat of a look into when you do the diplomatic play what's going to happen i still feel and that's why i haven't done a guide yet on diplomatic plays because i feel i can't guarantee what's going to happen it's so wars are kind of tough uh it's it got a little bit of that uh, randomness to it which is hard to predict but uh, this is the best way to get at least a feel for what you think might happen uh and, and if it's worth still pursuing that target Step three is preparing. So the first is you want to prepare your relations. So look at your strategic region, make sure this could take up to a year maybe for what you need. It all depends on what's going on, but you want to take a look at maybe France, or you may want to take a look at Portugal. I don't know, all the different uh, you know countries that are here that maybe are powerful, such as Russia. Make sure you're improving relations with them if you think you can get them on your side during the war, because that can make a big difference. Also, if your target uh, is liking you too much, because that could happen too, they could be improving relations with you, then you won't be able to go to war with them. So you want to make sure, keep an eye on that, make sure you're damaging relations most likely with who you're going to go to war with. If worst case uh, happens and they're improving, you're damaging and you can't quite get there to go to war, you can expel diplomats. And if you do this, your relations will be decreased by 30, which is great, but you'll take 10 infamy. So it's sort of a last resort. You should also check your economy. Make sure you're in good shape. We have a 4 million gold reserve, so this will carry us over if the war goes very long. You should also check your artillery and your guns and your ammunition. So I would always check my market and make sure that you're good here. But just looking at your balance isn't enough. You want to also keep in mind, depending on you know where you are with your technology and all that, your mobilization goods requirement. Here we're at a plus 40%. Since we have military statistics, we have a minus 20%. Usually it's plus 60%, so keep that in mind. So when you do start mobilizing your troops, when you go to war, when you finally get to that point, you're going to be spending a lot more money if you don't have the goods available. Lastly, another thing to be prepared about is your trade routes. So try to take a look and see what you got going. If you got any trade routes that are by the enemy, uh, they could destroy your convoys, so this could be an issue, so you want to keep that in mind. If maybe you were trading with the enemy, <laughs> which, you, which you weren't even thinking about, well, those trade routes will stop. Um, if other people get brought into the war on the other side as your enemy, so for example, if we're, uh, you know, maybe trading with Qing and they decide to become an enemy on that side of the war, then all of a sudden all our trade routes will stop. So you want to kind of look ahead and get an idea, especially as the diplomatic play is going, figure out how that's going to impact your trade routes and how that will impact your economy because all of a sudden when you're at war you don't want to be in like a negative nine thousand uh <laughs> cash flow as you're going through because that could be quite rough and you can eat through your gold reserves even though you have a lot it could go quite quick
I hope you all found this video useful. I find war to be quite costly in this game, so I don't go into it lightly. This is how I choose my targets and the steps that I usually take. If you found this useful, hit that like and subscribe and notification button. They're free. And as always, for the swarm.